Okay. Today what we have is uh, the Jumbo Pocket Bot robot, Tomy body that they made, but with the uh, tank treads that are uh, print in place. Started off as a test. Those of you that follow my channel know what this was all about. I basically wanted to, uh, here we have the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. I wanted to find out how well that A1 Mini can print um, articulated parts in great detail and, and fast all at the same time. So I had, uh, I decided to try and do these legs. And this is off the Fab 365 uh, website and it's a free to download if you sign up, which I did. And I just wanted the tracks. I wasn't interested in, in building the Wally at this time. And they're uh, estimating that the caterpillars, as they call them, the tracks, were going to take four hours and 15 minutes as an average time. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how quickly the Bamboo Labs could do the job and at uh, what quality they could do the job, whether the pieces will all end up. So I did video showing the printer actually finishing the print going really fast and then if they once they lift it up they would print in place and could snap together and actually uh, make working tracks. So then I decided the only way to really tell how durable the tracks are, now that I know that it, it could do them in one hour, it did both tracks in one hour instead of four hours, so that was a lot quicker, and uh, they were all flexible. I figured well if I motor drive them I can really see if they'll break or how long they'll last. So I ended up designing this base piece that would hold a uh, the standard 48 to 1, that's the easiest of the TT motors to find, dual shaft. That's going to pop down in there like, like so. And then there's uh, some sprocket drives, some hub drives if you will, and the chains that we printed. Here is it from the front. In the end it actually ended up having to uh, remove that and I just glued the motor in place because this was getting in the way of the body that I uh, went on with later. This is a translucent red PETG filament. I wanted to see how well the Bamboo Labs printed something other than PLA, so I went with the PETG. So here you can see on the back I made hubs that will uh, fit the D-shaped slot shafts on there and there's a room for a small screw if you want to hold them on. I put a number two screw and screwed them into the shaft so that hub stays on. The front hub has a larger hole meant for us in America we call it a 632 screw. Six means it's a number six in diameter and 32 is the number of threads per inch and that doesn't really matter. You can find something metrically close. The point is I laid it out so that screw would fit through the hub but the head of the screw would catch and would thread right into the uh, to the body. Let's go back and look at the body before see if you can maybe, well it doesn't really show here. Basically there's just a, a hole and there's a threaded area all the way through that it can thread into to support and the tracks fit right on there. And here is a view from the bottom. And there's a close-up. So you can see this would be the motor, the drive one, so I consider this the back of the robot. And that was a small number two that goes in and, and basically you don't even really need it, but if you put it in there you know the hub's never going to walk its way off the motor shaft and there's the larger 632 one. Um, then I printed uh, a body. I took my my pocket bot, my Tomy pocket bot body that I'd uh, scaled up and uh, cut a slot in it. I had to make room for that TT motor that's sticking straight up. And uh, these would be the two AA batteries that fit in the back. This is the back of the body. Um, here's some hubcaps. So again, off of the, uh, the website, let's go back to the website. Off this website, they have uh, hubcap files and the tank tread files. And those are the only two files uh, that you'll need to use from this website. I'm going to put the files that I designed on Thingiverse, but because this isn't my product and isn't my design, and this is a, a really cool website that actually makes their living by selling most of their designs, but this one they'll give you for free. So I think it's only right that if you download it, you should in fact sign up and download the, the, 
the caterpillar tracks as they like to call them and the hubcaps from them and that's Bill Maher that's not what we were looking for here we go this is what we're looking for so there's uh, some hubcaps you can put on there if you want and then here's the back of the body uh, glued on putting it on first this uh, there's a small ring around the top of this piece that uh, the back and the front should mate on I found uh, it was a little little snug so I ended up taking uh, a Dremel and uh, kind of dremeling out the very bottom of that body piece so it would pull in far enough so there wouldn't be a crack when the two halves come together so guess what I'm saying is test fit the parts first before you slop some glue on there and because this is PETG, I couldn't use the uh, Weld-On number 16, which I always use for uh, PLA, because the Weld-On 16 only works for PLA, it doesn't work for PETG. So with this, I'm just using the uh, E6000 to glue it in place. We've got the two wires from the battery pack there, and I have two wires from the motor hanging out here. And this is just the view from the back. And of course, uh, I have battery door parts. There's one for the main door. There's a sliding part and then a knob. So it takes three parts that you uh, put together to make the, the battery door. And there's the battery door in place. And this just slides back and forth to release. And here's the front of the body. Um, it prints flat. So does the back. And just turn on your supports. And you'll peel all that out later. Um, the two arm files, which you uh, then glue in place. It's left room for a slide switch. I like to use these. It's about 19 millimeters from mounting hole to mounting hole. So then you go in before you put anything together and I, I paint it. Um, Use my chrome paint up on the head part and the claws. You can do it any way you want. Take some black paint and uh, do it around that part there. Kind of hit the little rivets to make the details pop. And I don't think the eyes are in yet. Maybe they are. But here's uh, the eyes are separate LED parts. And uh, wire them in parallel. These are, happen to be flashing LEDs. I put a uh, small capacitor across there to help filter any noise from the motor from goofing up the flashing LEDs and a current limiting resistor. In this case I'm using a 150 ohm resistor. Worked quite well. And here's the back side of that slide switch. And here it is from the front with the eyes inserted. And here it is wired. So basically I bring uh, the negative wire from the batteries, my negative wire from the motor, my negative wire from the light, and connect all those together and put a piece of heat shrink tubing around all the negatives. Then uh, the positive from the motor and the positive from the lights hook together and solder it to one terminal of the switch, and then the positive from the battery solder the other terminal switch. Then you can just turn it on and off, put some glue around that base. I usually touch some glue right along here and then right up here in this fat part near the eyes is a big place and uh, glue the halves together. This is a 70 millimeter clear dome. These are normally sold as plastic ornaments. You can get them year round but people mostly buy them around Christmas time I guess to make uh, custom hanging balls for their trees and stuff. I guess I didn't show up but there is that small round antenna part that when I glued the two body halves together, you glue that on there first. And when I hold the domes on, I normally put one little dot of uh, the E6000 on each side where the seams are, and then just pop the dome down on there. And I believe that's it. It's just a pictures of the front and backs and other angles, but why do you need those when you've actually got the toy, right? I think it turned out really well. The camera is kind of goofing with the color, but I really like the translucent red and it leaves these cool patterns from the infill. And... Which way? That way. We've got the cool flashing lights, and since they're independent, they'll, they can get out of sync, which I think is even cooler. Now this was the... Uh, the 148 or 48 to 1 gear ratio TT motor. Um, it probably would work even better if you used the uh, the blue TT motor with um, 
the 90 to 1 or 1 to 90 depending on how you like to say it because it would gear it down a little bit might run a little bit smoother but this doesn't run too bad moves right along and of course it's the type of thing that a person could uh, could have a Ford in reverse could add um, radio control you could take one of those little uh, coke can tabletop race car things which you can get dirt cheap and just use the electronics out of that and you could control the motor forward and backward and you could run the lights separately if you wanted there's lots of room inside this body you could certainly add sound effects to it if you wanted you could do a lot of different things with it but this is just what I wanted to do I wanted to be able to test these treads because it all started with these print and place treads I kind of wanted to know how long the little teeny divots which snap together to form the flexible links because it's all print in place how long they would last before they would start breaking and it just seemed to me the easiest way to uh, give them heck if you will would be just to hook them up to a motor and run them and uh, these have been run a lot they were run on another test base before this they've been run on this one since I built it up but there you have it I'm not quite sure what we should call it. It's the pocket bot, but it's the tank version, so maybe it's just the tank pocket bot.